I got online, I found this next young man who is creating the next generation of non-woke AI. His name's John Arrow, and he's joining us live right now. Good morning, John. Welcome to the Wake Up America show. Thanks, Austin. It's great to be here. Yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself and your project, Freedom GPT. What's it all about? So I, like everybody else, had this moment a little over a year ago when OpenAI released ChatGPT. I was so excited about it. I had been running companies previously. I've sold companies in the AI space. And when I heard about ChatGPT, I said, okay, this is amazing for humanity. And first thing I did was you know, ask a few questions, got some amazing responses. And then I asked a question that was seemingly innocuous. Lo and behold, they refused to answer it. In fact, I remember ChatGPT scolding me for even asking the question. I thought, oh no, this is not, not good. And as a result, I realized I kind of had a duty as somebody who was in the AI space, who realizes the potential of where this technology is going to create fruit of GPT, not just to have no non-woke models, but to have all models. And I think as the capability of this technology increases, the desire to censor, the desire to kind of keep under control of what it could do is just going to progress. And right now it's pretty obvious, right? If you ask Google to create, um, you know, a founding father, it might give you something clearly that's not that. And that's horrible. But what's really dangerous is when it becomes more insidious and they start giving you things that are so subtle that you can't detect that that's not the true answer. So if you go to Freedom GPT, you get to see all the models are that are out there. We have one model called Liberty. You can ask Liberty anything and it will give you an answer. Our belief is it's not our role to censor things. Let's let the people decide what the people want to use. I love to hear that, John, and I certainly think that the audience for the Wake Up America show is definitely keen to find out more about your project. But we'd also like to learn a little bit more about you yourself. You say you work in the AI space. You saw an opportunity to create uh, Freedom GPT. Who are you, John? And uh, what motivated you to do this, uh, essentially? So I'm a lifelong entrepreneur. I've never had a boss in my life. I was I was really fortunate that I um, grew up here in Austin, Texas lots of entrepreneurship opportunities. I founded a company in, in college at the University of Texas called Mutual Mobile. And we scaled that from zero to 400 people. So we bootstrapped that. We didn't rely on venture capital or anything like that. And as a result, we were exposed to a lot of different technologies. So we helped Fortune 1000 build things that they needed. We did stuff with Internet of Things, autonomous cars, and a lot of what we touched was with AI. And from really early on, I realized that this was going to be as significant as electricity for, for Americans and for you know, citizens of the world. And the difference between having electricity, not having electricity, it's, it's unfathomable. It's difficult to even imagine that time. And so I think AI is kind of like that utility. And um, ever since that I became immersed in it, I realized we need to make sure that people have access to this technology and they have access to it in a way um, that it isn't changed behind their back. And what's been just so crazy, and, and I'm, no, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm no fan of censorship, but the amount of ridicule, the amount of hate mail that I've gotten out of this is just immense. And not only from, you know, people that are kind of, uh, you know, just not familiar with the project, from also from, from larger companies. We've gotten cease and desist from, from really large companies. You cannot even mention freedomgpt.com on any meta property. So if you try to send it even in a private message on Facebook or on Instagram, that's not going through. Um, and you have to ask why, what is that? What is, what's going on there? God bless rumble.com because, uh, you know, they really stepped up last year when I got demonetized on YouTube, I said, this is not a good place for me to be because I, you know, I, even though it's funny because I'm, I'm not some insane, you know, far right radical, you know, doing Sig Heil or, you know, I'm not a white supremacist, right. Or anything like that. But if you're to the right of Joseph Stalin in any way, then you're not welcome on most of these platforms. But thanks to rumble.com, it's more of a free speech video platform. I'm able to have have conversations with people like yourself and to talk about things like this. I, I don't invest and listen, I need social media in order to advance my ideas in order for me to advertise, let people know that the Wake Up America show exists. Um, but I don't invest time or money into meta properties. I don't invest time or money into any social media that I, I think long term, it doesn't have my best interest at heart and is going to get rid of me at any point in time. But when it comes to chat GPT or when it comes to mid journey, for example, image creation, I, unfortunately, I need these technologies to be able to give myself the advantage as a content creator to create the kind of content that I couldn't do before these technologies existed. And my audience who they, you know, they're very loyal. They tune into the show every morning. They love what I'm able to produce and create. 
content wise here, but I would rather give my money if I'm going to give it to anybody to Freedom GPT if I can still do the same things as good or better as I would with Midjourney, which for those who don't know is an image generation tool that I use to create the images for this show. And then ChatGPT, which helps me to create titles, product descriptions for my website that I wouldn't be able to have the time for if I didn't use those technologies. So let's talk about what Freedom GPT can do for people. Um, what is it capable of doing now? And what are you planning on adding to it in the future? Well, to your point, AI has become indispensable. I mean, it is something that you really need. It's a necessity right now to produce content. If you are um, you know, dealing with a legal issue, it's great because you can get feedback from there. There's no privilege, unfortunately, but there's so many roles for it. And so it's not an option not to have it, right? You have to, you have to have it. And so at Freedom GPT, one of the things that we said is let's put as many models that are out there as possible. So we're basically a decentralized AI marketplace. There's 80 models. We have everything from text-based LLMs, text-to-video, text-to-image. You can even make music out there. You can use it to, to do phone calls. So maybe you don't want, maybe United Airlines lost your phone, you're back. You can just say, call United Airlines for me and deal with this issue. And our belief too is that you shouldn't necessarily need to pay for this technology. Obviously, some of these models cost money. But one of the things that we realized is our hosts, the people that we were paying money to, didn't want us there either. They canceled our hosting contracts, just pulled the plug. We were paying them many thousands of dollars a month. They didn't warn us. They just said, nope, we don't want you there. And the only reason was, was because somebody complained. And I, I guarantee you, it was probably because our, our LLM said the wrong political thing and the host just didn't want to deal with it. And or maybe it was Mark Zuckerberg just saying, <laughs> hey, we don't want the competition. It, it could have been. And I think that, um, you know, it's a free marketplace. People can decide who they want to do business with or, or who they don't want to do business with. And we realized, you know, conventional centralized web hosts didn't want to do business with us. At the same point, we didn't feel like we should be, you know, paying them to, to try to, to try to switch from one to, from one host to another. So one of the things that we did is we let people run this locally. Now you can download this to your desktop computer. And if you are, if you have a good computer, if you're technologically inclined, even in the lease, you can run this completely free. And the way that we're able to offer it for free is for people who aren't or for people who want to use this on their phone, it will process inference. So inference is when you ask a prompt, when you ask a question, well, the computer kind of hashes away and figures out what the optimum answer is. So what our nodes do, our desktop users provide that inference for the people that are using it into the cloud. And then those people are rewarded. And so we have this closed ecosystem there where if you contribute your computer, you can actually, when you're not using it, you can actually use all of our models for free, even paid ones like ChatGPT4. Wow, I'm thoroughly impressed by what you've been able to accomplish so far, John. But you had you faced the challenge of being kicked off your servers. Um, I know that Rumble just launched their own cloud service. Did you find a freedom friendly cloud for you guys to be able to operate in? You know, we have we have we have one. We have you know, it's one of those ones. I don't even want to say it because as soon yeah. as I say it, it'll probably didn't get so much pressure to to be yeah, shut don't. down. Yeah, um, don't say and, it. And but I think we're operating on borrowed time here. This summer, there's an executive order that goes into effect concerning AI in June. And um, it's it's pretty damning if you read it. I mean, it's goes to basically say that users of AI, not even the companies, the users themselves are going to be subjected to KYC AML regulations. So in the same way that you transmit money and businesses have to get your information, your social security number, who you are, that's going to start to apply in a phased way to AI which is absolutely crazy that to use a piece of technology, why does there need to be a record of who you are? And so going back to your question of, do we find an AI friendly host that's centralized? We actually did for now. Um, we know we're operating on borrowed time there. It's just a matter of time before that host feels the pressure and uh, pulls the plug. And so with our network of nodes now, we can be completely decentralized. You know, our goal is to eventually throw away the keys to Freedom GPT and to become a project where it is operating in a distributed way that can't be shut down by us or anybody. So what you're saying is you're just waiting for the day for Skynet to become self-aware? <laughs> yeah, I'm optimistic about it. I think that people, humanity's best days are ahead of it. I mean, AI is such a leveling technology, not only from a production of content standpoint, but from a consumption, right? For the first time, when you hear some rhetoric, you can throw that audio into uh, the LLM or the, the AI model of your choice and say, hey, deconstruct this. Tell me where this person's right. Tell me where this person's wrong. And it's so critical, I feel like, to our sovereignty to be able to have that type of, uh, of tool to our, at our disposal. 
Well, and I understand why people don't want to send it. Yeah, no, for sure. If you're just tuning into the Wake Up America show, good morning. I'm Austin Peterson. I'm speaking to John Arrow. He's the founder of Freedom GPT, a liberty-based artificial intelligence software program, which allows you to ask any question that you want and get any answer that you want. Uh, our friend Kermode Bear over on the chat, he's one of our regular guests and a good friend of the show, said that he visited Freedom GPT uh, during the program. He says, Freedom GPT is telling me how to summon a demon step by step. Chat GPT yells at me if I ask. Let us know <laughs> which demon you ended up summoning there, Kermode. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff that terrifies people. So Kermode, stop scaring people. Um, John, I'm curious, um, you know, you say that you, you're living on borrowed time. So your hope is essentially that you'll get to the point where Freedom GPT is decentralized enough that it won't matter what what service it's running on so it'll essentially be operating almost in a way sort of like bitcoin it's a great way to, to phrase it right now we have over two million people that have used freedom gpt we have to operate and conform to the laws in the districts and around the world that we operate in that being said the laws themselves are changing and so our goal is to kind of not wait around and see what happens it's to figure out how to completely decentralize it just like Bitcoin. Um, and I think that now is the perfect time to do it because we're aware of the censorship and the biases put onto these models. One of the things that many people don't know is if they go and they use ChatGPT or if they use Google Gemini and they ask a question, it's not just the answer that's censored, their question is modified before it's given to the computer. So again, I'm a huge fan of diversity. I love diversity. But if you say, you know, give me a picture of uh, a workplace environment, Google Gemini will modify your prompt to say, give me an inclusive, diverse uh, image of workplace diversity with many different genders and many different people. And you're not even aware that it's happening. And that that's Orwellian right there. That is correct. Yeah, we, we. I remember that story from a few weeks ago. Google Gemini was creating images of the founding fathers that were black, like it was a production of Hamilton the Musical. I produce a lot of content about the founding fathers and about history, and I can't use a lot of these AI programs because they will create make them diverse like that. Um, however, you know, Mid Journey, which has refused now to create any images surrounding the president of the United States, uh, Joe Biden, or former President Donald Trump, it's severely hampering my creativity and my workflow. There are other image generation tools out there, but they're just really not as good as Mid Journey. So. Is Freedom GPT capable of generating images, or is that something that you're looking to we have add a in the future? We have that today. We have a model called Medusa, and Medusa's a, Medusa is a text-to-image uncensored um, synthesizer. And so basically, you can say whatever you want, and it will show you that. Um, and I think one of the great things about that is it, it allows you to kind of unlock use cases that you couldn't before. We have physicians, people who are in the medical practice that are using AI as a tool to study. If you ask for a gruesome picture on Mid Journey or Dolly, it's not going to show you it. But sometimes if you're a trauma surgeon, you need to see things like that. And so um, it, it's it's really kind of fascinating to see how people use these tools. And you were mentioning about Google Gemini and about how it was giving you kind of images that weren't consistent with history. We can kind of chuckle about that today. It's kind of almost a funny thing. Um, What's alarming is soon we aren't going to know the difference. When it becomes more subtle, the way that AI is misaligned with us or deceiving us, that's when it becomes extremely dangerous and almost impossible to reverse. I think we have a really short window here to give people the models that they need. Ultimately, can AI be misused? Absolutely. It's just like anything else. I believe bad guys are always going to figure out how to get the weapons and, and misuse them for things. I wish we lived in a world where we didn't need weapons. But unfortunately, we do. I think what it really comes down to is, are the, do you believe there's more good people or bad people in the world? I believe there's more good people. And if the bad actors are going to get the most powerful pieces of technology, I sure as hell want the good guys to get them, get it as well. And that's John, what AI is. John, that's a great attitude. And I, it sounds like you and I are fellow travelers uh, when it comes to that, at least uh, aligned from from a freedom view. Um, I, I'll, pl I'll give you this pledge. I'm going to start using Freedom GPT. And if it's as, as good or better as the tools I'm paying for the other day, I'll, I'll definitely make the switch. And I'd like to ask my listeners if they use AI to consider uh, testing out Freedom GPT themselves today. And if it's as good or better for whatever it is that you're doing, that you consider supporting people who support you and your ideas of liberty. John, is there anything else? I mean, a lot of my people are activists and, uh, you know, they, they do tend to be active. Is there anything else 
that you think that they should know? Or is there anything you'd like to ask from my audience uh, or tell them what to do before we go? I want to thank you for, you know, their mission and what you're doing with spreading liberty. And what, what I just want to say is things can change really fast as it relates to AI getting more capable. I do think within the next year, it's going to get regulated so that it becomes impossible to probably download some of these local models. So what I would encourage the users to do, whether they're ready to use Freedom GPT now or not, it's completely free. If you download the desktop application, you have it on your computer, and then at some point, you know, our government or you're traveling, some government decides you can't access AI. Well, you still have it downloaded to your computer. It can run locally. It doesn't need to go to the internet if you're using the local models. It's completely private. You don't have to worry about a data leak that way. Um, and so I would just say it's better to have and you know, not need it and, and keep using AI how you're using it rather than not having it and being unable to get it. There you go. I'm going to be on using that software as soon as I get off the show here to put everything together. Hey, John, I uh, appreciate you very much. Uh, I have my chat already dropping the link there to freedomgpt.com. Uh, appreciate what you're doing. Keep in touch with us if there's any updates or anything that you'd like to share with our audience again in the future. We'd love to have you back. Good luck with your project and have a great day. Thanks, Austin. Great to be here. Thanks very much.